I also wanted to talk about what does the Filipino American church provide for Filipinos? Um, so I kind of want to switch gears a little bit. What do Filipino churches provide in um, America for Filipinos? Place to have church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I want to talk about that a little bit. I guess I can, I can yeah, start. start it off. Yeah, I can start. So you would have like an idea of what I'm, what I'm getting at. Um, so I think like the reason, well, something I liked about Filipino churches, like I think it's beneficial to have Filipino churches in America is, um, and I guess maybe this kind of talks about the beauty, um, going back to our original topic is, um, it helped me retain some of my Filipino culture. So I guess Filipino American churches are also beds of Filipino culture where now you can learn Filipino culture from that um, mm. group, from that place. My parents, they speak Ilocano at home, but in um, the Filipino church, I, that's where I was exposed more to Tagalog and other things that are non um, Ilocano specific. Um, so they, it helped me uh, retain my culture. Some that's of my interesting. Culture. I just thought about this. You know, we've been talking. We were talking a little bit about multi-ethnicity and um, this um, idea that since or this pushback that since Filipinos speak English, we should become more multi-ethnic. But in multi-ethnicity, you sort of, well, I guess, there would be a majority language or a majority culture. But a lot of times, it's it's going to become more American culture. And if that's the case, and what you're saying is that we learn Filipino culture from Filipino American churches, uh, if we become more American, then we do lose a lot of. Uh, it's kind of like we won't have. Uh, we won't have Filipino American churches, I guess. Because there won't be places where you will, I mean, it will be one less place where you will learn your Filipino culture. Hmm. <clears throat> Does that make sense? So are you saying that um, the, the the benefit of Filipino American church is that they provide no, I'm a agree place? I'm agreeing with your, what you're saying. Oh, okay. That it, it provides a place for you to learn Filipino culture. Mm, yeah, yeah. I guess I was just going back to our previous episode where we we're saying that we're, there was a pushback where there shouldn't be a Filipino church because it should be a multi-ethnic church because they but, should be they should be able to just join an American church. That's right. You can just assimilate, or or the Filipino church when it becomes multi-ethnic would become majority American culture. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so I guess to flesh out your point more is like imagine if I hadn't gone to a Filipino church. Yeah. If my parents had just gone to an American church, how much Filipino culture would I have retained? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, because like if if you become multi-ethnic, you can't have a Filipino culture because that's not the ethnicity of people in that community. Mm -hmm. It's going to become an American culture. In that yeah. sense, it loses its Filipino identity when it becomes multi-ethnic. Yeah. Um, but I guess you could argue that <clears throat> uh, it could still be Filipino culture, um, but have uh, non-Filipinos join who are open to Filipino culture, who are okay with Filipino culture. Yeah, you're you're talking about if a Filipino church became multi-ethnic. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's a different topic. But it's just it was kind of just adding to your point. You were saying that um it's a no Filipino American churches are like beds for it's like a it's almost like a catalyst for learning Filipino culture or your roots yeah, or who yeah. you are, like your identity. Yeah, um, and I'm and I'm agreeing to that. That yeah, I think that's a good place for you to learn because that's generally where Filipinos gather. You know, it's generally where Filipinos come together, and you are exposed to different um, 
cultures, different foods, uh, languages. Mm-hmm. And I'm just saying <clears throat> that if we were going to go multi-ethnic, then yeah, we would lose more of that. Mm, yeah. Yeah, I think I, I definitely learned a lot of <clears throat> Filipino culture from my church. Like even the Filipino music, like if it wasn't for you guys, because you always <laughs> you play, guys. you guys always play uh, Bamboo and Francis M. And uh, <clears throat> wow, we're aging ourselves here. <laughs> yeah, Parokya ni Edgar. Yeah, you know, like I was exposed to that through you guys. So if I was in a multi-ethnic church, I wouldn't have picked that up on my own. Um, Maybe you'd have less chances to. Yeah, less chances. So yeah, there's a lot of um, things that I learned about Filipino culture just from our church. Yeah. Yeah, and also like there was a, a guy I know. He was in a multi-ethnic church and he's second gen like us like me mm-hmm. and he was um he has a daughter and he was thinking like he wanted to join our church because um he wanted his daughter to grow up in a like understanding Fili- filipino culture he didn't want his daughter to not have any um idea of what filipino culture is like because he was in a um interracial marriage like his wife mm-hmm. wasn't filipino mm-hmm. so he wanted to go to our church because um he wanted his daughter to be exposed to filipino culture yeah i i can't really think of anything besides the filipino american church where filipino american christians could um regularly gather in a yeah. sense where it would be an exposure to them and their children about filipino culture yeah, you know, I don't know of any other regular occurring event. Yeah, yeah. But what about the Filipino events, like the for BMAC, for example, like the Filipino yeah, specific? But, yeah, for so BMAC is for like eager roads in the U.S. Uh, yeah, I think that's that's good. But I don't like of all the Filipino groups that I know. I think it's only our people group, the BMAC, who actually would meet as regular as that and even then it's not it's still not as regular as church you know yeah, yeah. it's not a weekly event mm-hmm. right but i think the bmac thing is also like a intentional part to instill or to teach culture yeah and like i i think i also want to be like um <clears throat> like i would still say that the um <clears throat> the Filipinos from who are non-Christians who don't go to Filipino churches, they they still have those organizations where they do pick up Filipino culture, and yeah, like, yeah. like those <clears throat> Filipino non-Filipino American Christians, they still do retain Filipino culture, even though they're not um, going to a Filipino church. Mm-hmm. But I guess I would just say that um, uh, what for in my experience, that's where I learned. Yeah, I think in general for second gen Filipinos, without the Filipino American church and with the parents, the first gen assimilating a lot easier, speaking English at home with most Filipinos. It's be gone. (laughs) I mean, the Filipino trait identity, it'll be gone like quick. What do you mean, gun? Like the I mean, second it, gen? It, yeah, for this in this with within the second gen. Um, that might not be a bad. I mean, it, it depends how you look at it. Some people might say, "Oh, well, it's okay." Yeah, but I think I, I mean, there are still second gen Filipinos. I know that they they know Filipino culture, though, right? Yeah, but they probably learn it like from their parents, mm-hmm. right? Or they speak it at home. Well, I think the, the way the I see it is. They probably have Filipino friends that their parents. Yeah. Um, so that's where they picked it up, I think. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, like even in school, right? Like even in school, uh, when you have Filipino uh, groups, uh, this is from personal experience, so it probably not <laughs> scientific, but it seems like Filipinos who are who immigrated here like young filipinos who immigrated here you know they get together regularly as like barcadas 
but you can still differentiate them from like second gen. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like it's like a um, second gen second gen Filipino Americans don't usually uh, gather with them as much. I mean, they might for like a one of those like you know Filipino big Filipino events like if there's a concert but not like the weekly thing where they hang out oh, okay so you're, you're you know, saying that Filipino churches provide that yeah I think Filipino churches in general would for second gen because it's regular um, because it meets you know, every week you would be more exposed no oh, okay um, you would be more exposed to Filipino culture without it I'm just saying like without it like I feel like for you, for example, you would have just gone to like an American church and you'd be okay. You wouldn't even think, maybe you wouldn't even think about, you know, being Filipino American. Mm. You know, you just assimilate and maybe that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess the main point is like uh, Filipino churches, um, in my experience, that was like, the main way I picked up some or I was able to retain my Filipino culture not just retain but like learn Filipino culture oh yeah yeah learn learn uh, yeah learn Filipino culture yeah and also yeah I guess what you were saying too is like being exposed to first gens um yeah like you I wouldn't been able to you wouldn't be friends <laughs> right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that the church is the only place of exposure, but I'm just agreeing to your point that it is a bed of exposure to Filipino culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 